Nicole here. Today I'm at Jeff's house. Thank you so much for inviting me over again. Yeah, nice to have you. So we are going to do another plant collection video and today we are going to focus on begonia. So shall we get started? Let's get started. Alright, so I have a few begonias that are kind of rare. This one is a begonia listata and it has a green vein down the middle of the leaf. It's one of my kind of my favorite ones. I love the name too. And then I have uh, this is my begonia terrarium. This is a begonia cleopatriae and there's, if I'm not saying it right, I love that one. So this is Begonia amphioxus, and what the name means is basically pointed at, at both um, the top and the bottom of the leaf. Uh, this is definitely a terrarium Begonia that needs to be kept in high humidity. Uh, I got this one as a cutting from a plant swap and I've had it for probably um, about four months and it was only two leaves when I got it. But this is a highly recommended plant um, from me because it's just so easy to care for. It grows so wonderful and um, it can stay in a cloche or a, a dome, humidity dome, mm -hmm. and survive quite well. These usually run from about $30 to $50 um, per specimen. And of course, the that's a, a used pot, but it's really not $7.99. But um, anyways, it's a Begonia amphioxus. I see it's flowering. Did you notice that? I did not. It, yeah. It's where? underneath the, do you see the white? Oh yeah, yeah. there we go. Yeah, it is known for its, um, its uh, kind of um, flower that doesn't really amount to anything. <laughs> uh, so this is a, another uh, rare begonia. Oh and I love the texture. Yes, it has beautiful little spikes on the leaves. And it has these little hairs on the spikes as well. Uh, this is a Begonia Milano Bolata. Milano Bolata. And um, this one usually you can get for about 50 bucks. I do recommend, um, you know, keeping it in a terrarium with high humidity and it does not like water on the leaves. Here you can see this leaf here. Um, it kind of had some condensation because it was growing under this leaf mm -hmm. and it got some water on it and it just kind of shriveled up and died. So I just pay attention to your um, water touching the leaves on this one. Do you usually just bottom watering this plant? So I do or I just very carefully um, water it across the top as well. So uh, begonias do like their nutrients. They like to be fertilized. Um, I use a low uh, fertilizer and I also make sure that I use a product that has CalMag in it, which is calcium and magnesium. Uh, the two of those together help the uptake of the calcium in the plant. Um, there are some products out there that um, I use um, that I recommend. But anyways, these um, are really easy to care for as long as you give them the high humidity. And then this one is uh, Begonia chlorosticta and this one basically is um, polka dotted. It puts out uh, two different you know male and female flowers on the same plant. Uh, this is um, 
This is the uh, ending of the flower. I'm not sure if I got seeds or not. I'm not sure if these produce seeds. Um, but anyways, um, once again, you want to make sure um, I recommend a fan in the terrarium with uh, this guy. Um, before I put a fan in my terrarium, I actually had um, some burning on the tips because every morning I would get some condensation. Like here you can see a little bit of a brown on that tip. Um, but I would get condensation on the very tip of the leaves and it would burn the tip of the leaves. And, one, and since I added the fan to the terrarium, I do not get any uh, burnt tips. But this is um, Begonia chlorosticta and it does come in a red form as well that gets these beautiful um, red um, undertone leaves with the green polka dots. But that is a more rare find. Is it the one that on your wish list right now? <laughs> <laughs> uh, it is one of, I would love to find it, but I would also love to find it under $150 and I don't think that's possible these days. So it is just gonna stay on my wish list for a while. I do love the the red center of mm -hmm. the leaf on this one. It's just so beautiful. Yep. So this is Begonia sizemorie. It likes humid conditions. It is a hybrid begonia. This is Begonia hemsleyana. And it likes humid conditions. And this is Begonia brevimosa. And this is the red form. And it definitely likes humid conditions all the time. And it lives in this terrarium. And this actually gets quite large. So that's with, that's pretty much it with my rare ones. So uh, high humidity and begonias um, are important. Well, for some uh, begonias, especially terrarium begonias. And my setup, I basically have a basic glass box. This is an aluminum frame glass. Um, this is an old bread box that I found at an antique store. And what I do is I have a uh, stainless steel cookie tray that I fill with water and then I've gone to Home Depot and got a light crate and place the light crate over the cookie tray so there's a tray of water underneath all of my begonias and this uh, is enough to keep the humidity in here about 70 to 80 percent and on warmer days it goes up to 90 percent so i do also have a uh, heat mat under this whole box that i turn on during the winter months to keep the um, box warm and that humidity up but this is kind of a simple way to have your um, humidity in a terrarium like atmosphere and then of course I've added a fan to this box specifically um, because these are begonias that like to have that air circulation. So that's how you can create your own uh, kind of humid box, humidity box. Now this one was sold to me as Begonia Luxuriance. And I got this from uh, Taylor's Greenhouse. Taylor's Greenhouse is a great place to find begonias. Uh, but I'm not sure this is a um, begonia luxuriance. So um, I am kind of still researching that. I've actually recently bought another begonia luxuriance and I want to compare the two and they're from different companies. Um, online uh, sellers so um, more to come on that but this eventually is supposed to get a palm leaf mm -hmm. um, very beautiful 
Uh, this is a, a new begonia to me. I got this to go in a uh, Wally Grow. This is a begonia? Yeah, so this is a begonia. It only gets about um, four to six inches tall, but it gets uh, to be about six feet long. So um, I got this one to go in a Wally Grow so it can flow down out of the Wally Grow and kind of be on my um, Wally Grow wall. But uh, this one is called, and I'm not sure of the pronunciation, Polygonoides. Polygonoides. I'm sure that's being said wrong. But anyways, um, there's... This one is a... Uh, uh, begonia that is has a rhizome but it has the rhizome grows up instead of sideways so this is one of the only upright growing rhizomatic uh, begonias and it has this beautiful velvety leaf that is just so soft and oh yeah and then here's a new leaf, kind of has a nice red color to it. Did you just get it recently? Uh, no, I've actually had this for about almost a year, but I got it as a very uh, like a little uh, stub. So it is a very slow grower. It's actually started to grow a little bit faster now um, that it's getting a little bigger. This begonia, um, it has a very waxy leaf. It's so shiny. Yeah, it's called begonia epsilla. And it has a waxy, shiny upper leaf, and it is a thicker leaf, but if you turn the leaf over, oh, wow. it's red and it's fuzzy. So it actually has like a little it looks like a flocked back side of the leaf on it wow. yeah so anyways uh this one uh is about nine months old once again i got this as a small plant and i'm just growing it out what would be the fair price for this one you know um most of these small begonias um i i'll get them from uh, different online stores and they're only between $12.99 and $14.99. Mm. They're very reasonable in price. Um, in fact, usually shipping is more expensive. So some plants, they don't ship well. Um, what do you think about begonia? I've never had a problem with um, begonias except for my um, Darth Vaderiana. Uh, which is a new plant to me and it came in the mail very um, hurt. <laughs> the leaves were very um, damaged and I don't know, they put an ice pack in, so I don't know if it was the um, person I sold it from or if it was the heat of the this time of year. So I'm not sure what caused that, but other than that, I've never had a begonia um, problem with shipping. Um, of course, Darth Vaderiana um, is one that um, is very, um, very rare and very, um, it doesn't, doesn't ship well. It's known to not ship well. So here, this begonia is one of my favorite. I love the red centers in this. It's grown quite well for me. It just stays in my west window. I don't remember the name of it off the top and I don't have it labeled. Yeah. So this is the Darth Vaderiana. It doesn't ship well. 
and um, as you can see this leaf here is very limp because it's it basically died in the mail um, these you have to be very careful with the sourcing them responsible um, because uh, they do sell them you can get them imported um, and there's a, a big problem with people um, grabbing these out of their natural habitat so if you buy these make sure you get them from a responsible source who um, propagates from um, stock that they already have and this is supposed to have um, kind of a black leaf with green edge but um, I do have a replacement coming. Um, I had to um, basically uh, have some words with them. You're not afraid it might die in the mail? Well, um, that was their solution was to try shipping it again. So if the second time doesn't work for them, I will just get my money back. I paid $65 for this. Um, so it is an expensive plant and um yeah, you want it to look good and i want it to look good or at least have some um growth on it that will mm -hmm. uh, is alive so begonias are easy to propagate um, a lot of begonias you can just cut a leaf and water root a leaf and um plant it uh you can also cut the stem and uh, water propagate a stem of a begonia. So you mean you don't have to have a stem to propagate, you just need a leaf and then it will grow into a plant. Correct. With most begonias, you only need a leaf. Um, this begonia here was given to me by my neighbor. I don't know the name of it. I really haven't even tried to find a name, but um, my neighbor has one of these that are, it's probably about seven feet tall. And um, he gave this one to me uh, this last year. So um, he propagated it by um, stem cutting. So he just snipped off part of the stem and rooted it. Most begonias are really easy to care for. I plant all my begonias in um, Fox Farm Ocean Forest soil. Um, I recommend that soil. I don't have a gnat problem with that soil. I also um, like the bat guano and the worm castings that they put in that soil. Um, I think it's just a very natural fertilizer for your plants. And so I use that soil. Sometimes I, um, add in some perlite but with my begonias most of the time it's just 100 percent um, soil out of a bag and i have no problem with it and i do have um, one other begonia uh, my begonia um, maculata um, and it's in the other room if you'd like to go see it so this is my uh, begonia maculata and I've got this this last winter. Uh, I got it at, um, a friend bought it for me from Lowe's. And it was probably, I want to say maybe January. So I've only had this for about half a year. And it's just grown like crazy for me. I One of my tricks with this one is I keep it next to my aeroids in my aeroid room and um, I basically give it the same conditions as my aeroids so higher humidity um, I have grow lights that are probably oh three to four feet away from the plant and um, I fertilize it during the um, summer months and um, water it when I can lift the pot and it feels like there's no water in the soil. And I've also um, left it in, and I usually don't do this with any plants, but uh, this soil here um, is the soil it came in and I've left it in the same soil. It's kind of like a coconut choir, um, maybe um, peat, um, kind of mixture. It's very fluffy and light. 
um, but it's what it came in and I've just left it in it and it has liked it. I give it its, its nutrients probably every six weeks um, and uh, I use an organic uh, fertilizer for this one and um, it grows like crazy. This one here is a new leaf that has come out and you can tell it's a little wrinkly and of course once it hardens off it turns to this nice green color. Um, so here you can see a leaf that um, I don't know what happened there. Maybe maybe that's not a good leaf to show. <laughs> maybe I just knocked that off. Here's a leaf here. So here's a leaf coming out and it will eventually come out and be a good long leaf like that. So very easy to care for. It needs higher humidity for sure um, or else it will get the um, the crispy edges and you can see also here these leaves were on the plant when I purchased it and um, what this is is probably from um, shipping where water was kind of pressing against the leaf and it can also be from like a um, begonias have a, a problem with like rust spots and sometimes uh, you know that can be some type of a um, fungus or bacteria on a begonia as well but I'm assuming it's water because I really haven't had any problems with this plant whatsoever so I just keep it next to my aeroids in my aeroid room Thank you so much, Jeff, for inviting me over. It's nice to have you. It's always nice to have somebody who's also in the plant hobby, and it's nice to have um, the your YouTube channels to um, you know everybody in Kansas City to watch. And I hope these videos um, kind of help inspire people to um, you know, add another plant to their plant collection and try a new species of plants and not be afraid with, um, you know, growing and being a plant mom or plant dad or, you know, a plant parent. And, um, it's nice to have you here. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Thank you. So previously we did plant collection video on Hoya on Syngonium, Peperomia, and this one uh, we focus more on Begonia. So if you guys have anything specific you want to watch, make sure you comment below. Again, if you like this video, make sure to give us a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell notification button so that you will not miss out any of our future videos. I will see you in my next one. Bye-bye.